Hello guys, welcome back to Archangel RC. This time I'm not going to show you a large twin tractor mapping plane, but a tiny 60 cm FPV racing wing, which despite its size was able to receive a fully featured autopilot system along with the onboard module for the MyFly Dream antenna tracker. And that is one huge PCB. I have never put it on a plane as small as this one before. The internal space is an okay size and thanks to the compactness and simplicity of the Omnibus for Pro Controller and everything that it combines on one board, I was able to, not easily mind you, fit that, a Matek PDB, the tracker board, a Runcam Split Mini 2 and the new FR Sky R9MM receiver in there along with a 4S 850mAh battery and the ESC. I did have to do quite a bit of wire management to fit everything. The stock ESC got its wires almost completely removed and got shoved in the opening right behind the motor so I hope it doesn't overheat. I also decided to change the servo powering scheme on this build from what I usually do so I removed the diode in question on the Omnibus F4 Pro board so I can power the servos via the ESC's back through the controller's spin rail just to avoid the addition of an external s back and a wiring harness. This is a small model after all, we'll have to make some sacrifices. Besides, these servos are small and should be okay with the ESC's back for the time being. Actually the biggest issue here was where to put the antenna tracker module as it is by far the largest component not counting the battery. Soon enough I figured it out and I even managed to get the CG right although I did have to put the GPS module on the outside but I guess I can live with that. Mounting the VTX and R9MM antennas was not too big of a deal and soon enough I was ready for the maiden flight. Getting to the field with this plane is easy actually as it virtually takes no space whatsoever unlike the crosswind which completely takes over the back seats. It really didn't take long to get the plane ready for flight tossed it in the air and wouldn't you know it, it flew pretty darn well right from the get-go. I had dialed in some up trim, this is a flying wing after all and I've never seen one fly level without any, but what a surprise, this one didn't need it. Well done Sonic model for the well designed plane. Required a little right trim perhaps due to the torque roll created by the motor and from there on it was a pretty pleasurable experience to fly the R-Wing. And just in case you're wondering, yes, next up was a stall test, or a few actually, and in manual mode, it just didn't tip stall. Entered into a right turn, wasn't overly tight even, and that was it. No tip stall to speak of. Obviously, I had gotten the CG right, and perhaps I might be able to move it a bit further back to make it more neutral, but right now it was perfect for a maiden flight, and my confidence in the plane really grew when I saw this stall performance. So I went ahead and tested the fly-by-wire A mode on the autopilot and it worked just fine not pulling the plane up or down so I guess I must have calibrated that accelerometer well enough. However, when I looked at the FPV feed the plane was shaking quite a lot, there was some wind and it was getting knocked around a lot and the default PIDs definitely seemed like they might be too high for this plane but I was going to deal with this in the next flights. Out of curiosity I decided to do a max speed test and this little thing was able to reach 130 kilometers an hour without falling apart which just might be the fastest I've flown a plane or at least the fastest I have a record of. I think the Fury Wing might have done more but I didn't have a way of tracking that. After trying the auto mode with a simple mission for a bit I really wasn't impressed by the performance of the PIDs, too much shaking and it was making me dizzy in addition to just looking awful. I landed when the battery got low which was about 10 to 12 minutes into the flight which is still not bad considering the size of the battery and how I flew the plane but perhaps it could do a bit better after some more setup and tuning and when flown with that purpose in mind. The next few flights were spent fighting some nasty oscillations due to the default PIDs being all wrong so here is an example where auto-tune didn't do too good of a job and actually on the pitch axis it made it worse. After making some progress I coded the day and actually took the chance to rearrange the gear a little bit moving the VTX and R9MM receiver out to the wings which really did make a difference the next time I flew the plane. Since now I had a super micro UX2 stubby antenna on the plane which is circularly polarized I decided to use the new triple feed patch array on the antenna tracker just so I can test it out. 
I took the plane with me on a trip to the mountains and it did not disappoint. Didn't suffer any oscillations this time, although PID still needed a bit of tuning. I did fly it high up into the mountain, making it all the way to 1.4 kilometers above ground level and up there the plane was flying a lot better and calmer than when close to the ground. Yet another point in favor of chasing clouds compared to proximity flying. In addition to the plane behaving very well, I'm also glad to report that the new receiver location seems to be paying off as the RSSI was solid throughout the flight and I did go out to 5 kilometers with the R9M module set to 200 milliwatts. The video feed was also spectacularly good and clear free of any interference other than the electrical stuff on board the plane which told me that this array antenna is actually working pretty darn good and I can't wait to test it out at a greater range with one of my larger long range models which should happen very soon. After coming back from my trip, I took the plane to the flying field the very next day for some more PID tuning and I'm glad to report that at the end of the day, the Mini R-Wing had become a manned beast. It could use a bit more fine tuning on the pitch axis, but I was very happy with the results. You can find the param file in the description of the video below, but use it at your own risk. After the tuning, I ran one of my favorite missions again and was very happy with the results this time. It looks much better when the plane is flying well and not oscillating like crazy all of the time throughout the mission. Once I was happy with the performance of the plane, I decided to test it out and see how high I can get before the battery runs out. The plane climbed comfortably at 5 meters a second at 43% throttle, which is pretty impressive. I see that kind of ascent on the big birds only when there are thermals and throttle is in the 70s. In no time the plane had gained 2 kilometers of altitude and was out to about 4 kilometers and that is where the battery voltage suggested I should turn back but it was an impressive feat for sure out of this small battery. I really didn't think it would make it that high. After charging it on the ground it took in around 800 milliamp hours so I had turned back in time. After this flight I did make an attempt to chase it with my Phantom but that was a mission impossible. It is just too small and too quick and too black to be easily visible. I had to fly below it so I'd have a chance to see it against the blue sky and even then catching up to it is not an easy task. We'll have to wait for the snow to fall so I can do a proper chase. Overall I am pretty darn happy with this thing. We'll have to try and do some endurance runs just to see what I can squeeze out of it in terms of flight times but even in these 10 to 12 minutes of flight it is able to do some amazing things and get to some impressive distances and heights for its size so I'm pretty happy with it. Might even chase some clouds around if I get a chance now that I know it could reach them easily. As far as performance goes, it will get tossed around in the wind and when the conditions are turbulent, but there is no going around that. Stow performance is excellent and gliding is okay for a wing, I guess. Didn't do too much of it to be honest. Landings are what you would expect. It wants to nose in even if you are pulling hard on the elevator, but my experience with it did show that it is a tough little bugger and can take a beating without complaining too much. It is designed very well and that EPP material it is made of is pretty awesome. Even so, this is not a beginner model I'm afraid, so make sure you've got some decent experience before going for this one. Now, stay tuned as I will have more videos on this plane, but until then you can find links for the stuff shown or used in this video in the description below, and using any of them to buy literally anything from those websites would help support this channel and you will gain my eternal gratitude as that is how I make my living. Another way you can support me is Patreon, the link is also there and I am truly grateful to all the people who have supported me so far in any way and would continue to do so. If you have enjoyed this video and found it useful please feel free to like, share and subscribe if you haven't already and also consider following me on Facebook for more regular updates. I wish you happy flying and until next time.